Make sure I'm recording. There's Sarah. I think I'm gonna choose my virtual background. There, that looks good. And how do I know what if I'm recording? I think it's All right, let's start letting people in. Even that Stephen Palatico. So, oh, they're coming in. Nice uh, chin diaper there, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I got to put my volume up a little, I think. Yeah. There's Dick. Morning, Dick. Morning. Okay. I think we had. What'd you say, Stephen? About twenty-three people registered, or so. Or high twenty, so that's a good, good uh, number. Wait a few more minutes for them to come in. I let. Oh, I make sure I got my share screen here. So that you'll be able to use it now. Dick, you should be able to uh, share the screen whenever you're ready. But Well, I'm load, loading up the PowerPoint. Okay. Here we go, Sarah. A couple more. Andrew. Okay. Can you see the PowerPoints? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> they have a life of their own, I think. <laughs> I think uh, if you want to get the full screen on it, Dick, if you hit the slideshow. Let's see where we are here. Up top here.
give it another minute and then we'll get started here. I guess we got 11 in here right now. I think we had 23 signed up, but some people don't. That's a good number. Yeah. All right, I can always let people in as they, they, they come in, but we, I guess we can get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Turnbull from the Genesee County Chamber of Commerce, and uh, uh, we're having this, uh, we've got Dick Petit here from uh, the Small Business Development Center uh, to give us a, a presentation on business planning and uh, business planning during the COVID, which you know I, I don't think there's ever been uh, a time that's more difficult to plan for the next year. I know I've been doing my budget. I know how difficult that is. Uh, there's so many uncertainties coming into the next, next coming year that uh, uh, it, it's going to be difficult. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing what uh, Dick has to say. Uh, if you have uh, questions, I think, of course, I can't see my chat. Oh, there's my chat. Box. If you just enter them in the chat box. Uh, and we may even have some time for uh, verbal back and forth at the end, too. So Got three more people coming in here. So, yeah, again, Dick, if you up on the top there where it says slideshow, the button for slideshow, if you hit there, I think that'll give you a full screen of uh, your your uh, presentation. This comes another one. Looking for it. <laughs> right. See, it's up in the orange there, the red. Almost to the middle of the screen. Oh, I see it. Okay. Hit, hit that. Click on that. And then from beginning. Here I'm acting go. like I know what I'm doing, but Stephen Politico had to teach me how to do this <laughs> about a week ago. So yeah, so it not, varies. Yeah, yeah. So it's not make make seems like I know what I'm doing, but I I, I had to learn it myself. So okay, that's the only reason I know it. All right, well, we'll let you take over, Dick, and uh, go ahead with your presentation. And okay, well, thank you very much, and welcome, everyone. Uh, as Tom already said, if you have any chat comments, you can put them in the chat function, and uh, we'll try to get to some of those as we move along. Okay, so really what we're looking at here is business planning at a, at a very interesting time in our business existence. Um, one of the things that I keep running into with the multiple clients that I have, and I have multiples, uh, I've been doing this for 14 years for small business development centers. So uh, I've before that, I did it without getting paid for it <laughs> on my own. But um, one of the things that I've learned is that there's all kinds of things that get into the picture of what you're trying to do. So what I've talked about is it's all about getting from here to there. It really is all about getting from here to there, where we are today, where we want to be tomorrow. And I put a map up there because one of the things that I used to describe that is if you're in Batavia and you want to go to Rochester, there's more than one way to get there. Uh, by car, you can take that through way or you can take 33 or drive up to 31 if you're you're adventuresome, but there's multiple ways to get there. And if you happen to be a person who likes sailing, one of the things that you learn is, and I've learned this, I actually did some sailing in uh, San Francisco Bay, that you're not necessarily able to get from here to there in a straight line. And so one of the things that I use as an example of that is, okay, so you're sailing along you're headed towards a point, but there's some rocks in the way. Now, are you gonna sail through them? No, you're gonna find a way to go around them, but then you have to get back on course. You have to get back on course, resume where you wanna go and go there. And that's what it's all about getting from here to there is about. Um, when I uh, teach, uh, I teach at Brockport, uh, sometimes at Monroe Community College as well, I've actually done a couple sessions at GCC. Um, one of the things I tell the students is, it is all about getting from here to there. Think about it. Get up in the morning, you gotta go to work. 
get up in the morning, you got to go to school. It's all about getting from here to there. Now, of course, what I get back is, yeah, but it's how you do it. Exactly right. Exactly right. So that's why you have to plan. And that's really what this is about. It's really business planning. What I use is what I call the feasibility process. You have an idea. You have an idea for a business. You have an idea how you'd like this business to proceed. So you come up with a business definition. What is my business? Very simple. We call it elevator speech. Two sentences. If you get into an elevator on the first floor and you're going to the second floor and somebody in the elevator says, well, what do you do? What's your business? Can you do it in the time? And we always say it's about two sentences long. Can you do it in the time before they get off the elevator? And that's important because when you're presenting your idea to other people and to lenders, you want to be as clear and concise as you can be. And also underneath that, you see personal business objectives. What is, what's the reason why you're doing this? <laughs> I have to chuckle because I have a story of a person that came to see me a few years back, um, had an idea, wanted to open up a pizza business. Okay. So I said, well, um, are you in the business? No, I just like pizza. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know anybody that is in the business? No, I just like pizza. Have you ever been with a chef or had a chef? No, I just like pizza. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you almost have to question yourself. Why, why am I doing this? Just cause you like pizza. Okay. And then the next step over is market analysis. Really, who are you marketing against in many times? What industry are you in? What's going on with that industry? Who is your competition? We'll use the pizza example. I said, okay, well, where, where would you put the pizza place? And he told me, and I said, oh, okay. And I knew where it was. And I went down there and in the drive from getting off of actually five, Route 531 to Lyle Avenue in, in the city, it's actually six pizza shops. And if you make the turn towards the city, there's 12 more. So when you look at that, you go, is that the best place to put this? And many times people will say to me, well, besides the fact that they like pizza, they'll say, well, our pizza is better. Okay. Uh, maybe it is. And the next question is going to be, is your target market interested in what you think is the best pizza? You may have to ask them. So the next one is requirements, experience and knowledge. Have you ever done this? Do you know anybody that's done this? Do you have anybody that can help you do this? Time. How much time are you willing to devote to this? Well, I just like pizza. Uh, okay, but what else do you do? Is you gonna devote most of your time? No, no, I'm working and, uh, but I just like pizza. Next one down is legal. Now, a lot of businesses will start out as sole proprietorship, otherwise known as a DBA, doing business as. It depends on the business, if that's the best way to go. Yes, you can start that way. But if you're doing something where you have liability, you may want to look at a corporation like an LLC. And that's the other thing that we can help with. And the last one, of course, is financing. How much do you need? And, and if you don't have a business plan, you probably are guessing at how much you need. Better to have a business plan that defines what you need. Uh, the bankers and the lenders like that better. At that point, there's a decision. 
have we covered the kinds of things that we need to keep moving forward and producing the business plan? If the answer is no, we go back and we reevaluate. By the way, the gentleman that just like pizza, uh, after he left, he never came back. As far as I know, he never started his pizza business. Um, too bad. It's always nice to have pizza, but it's reality. So what is a business plan good for? It's definitely a document for fundraising. When you meet with your lender, they're going to want to see your business plan these days. It used to be years ago, you could actually put your idea on a napkin. Not anymore. Your banker, your private lender, even your uncle wants to see your business plan. So part of what you do is you're really developing your plan of operations. How are you going to go about doing this? How many people do you need to do that? What's the location? How much money are you going to need? And the roadmap is very important because it also tells employees, and if you're a corporation, the board, that you actually have plans and goals and objectives for the business. So it's a document for fundraising. That's one of the big ones. It's actually all of the above. Again, the business plan describes the business. What business are we in? The markets, where's the opportunity? Do I have competitors? Are those competitors the same or different than what I'm offering? Industry forces. Are there any competitive threat threats? And what's your competitive edge? This is the major sections of a business plan. Your executive summary, which is really the last thing you write. That's, that's the thing that uh, you hold until the end. Uh, your product or service. Again, what is it that you're offering? Markets and customers, where are they? Are they, why would they be interested in your product or service? Competitor and the industry analysis. Your company, how are you gonna manage it? And operations, all very important. It shows that you have a good idea for your business and how it should operate to be successful. Financial information. They're going to ask for, your lenders are usually going to want to know, are you in fact financially stable? Now in today's COVID environment, that's a tough one. Some people are really struggling and the lenders know that. And that's why there are programs that are out there that actually provide funding when you are experiencing some difficulties. So why do you need a business plan? It encourages you to be specific and to look at informal and mental plans, which tend to be vague. I just like pizza. Well, it's not enough to say I just like pizza if you're going to produce a real business with real profits. To evaluate the feasibility of your ideas before, big word, before you invest time and money in them. In other words, if you have that business plan and it's very well spelled out, then you know what it's going to cost you how much time you have to invest, and if in fact it's feasible. And that's, that's really what it is, is to identify any of those weaknesses or potential problems before. 
also provides you with some planning, operating, and policy guide guidelines. It's a blueprint to follow as you build your business. Does it mean that you have to live by it 100%? Well, at the beginning, you might think so. But a business plan, I always say, should be a living business plan. A plan that you can actually adjust as the different areas change. Again, it helps to educate and motivate key employees. They want to know that you are actually going in a positive direction, especially if they're going to come and work for you. They want to know that. Also helps your decision-making process. It helps to improve the likelihood of success. Uh, some statistics here. According to the U.S. Business Small Business Administration, more than 50% of all new businesses fail within the first two years of operation. Now, the positive side of that is those businesses that have business advisors actually do much better. And also, when you go to a lender or an investor, a lot of times they'll say, do you have a business plan? And if you don't, we get the phone call. Can you help this person? They really need a business plan. And all they're asking for is, can they be successful? If you're going to give somebody a loan, think about yourself. If you're going to give them a loan, you'd like to know that you can get it back someday. And that's what they're looking for. The business plan really is your first contact with a funding source. Funding sources are VCs, that's venture capitalists, angels, angel investors, bankers, which you would expect. And like I said, even your uncle, your uncle might be considered one of the angels. Everyone that I know of wants to see a business plan. And it shows that you've actually put some time into it, some thought into it. You've got a pretty good idea of where you want to go, how you want to get there. And that's what they want to see. That's what they want to hear. Just like it says, a powerful first class business plan leads to a more positive meeting with the lender. So at this point, you might be asking, well, how do I know? Well, you came to the right place. That's what the Small Business Development Center does. We work with you to help develop your business plan, to help develop your thought as it relates to the business, and to help you to move in a successful direction. So one of the things I always ask is, well, who's your banker? Get to know your lender. Once they give you a loan or a grant or however they come up with the money, um, invite them to the business. Invite them to see how it's doing. You should be prepared to meet with the lender. It shouldn't be intimidating. You should know it. And you should always keep them informed about your business. It's important to be responsible with your credit as well. And that's what they're looking for. Responsible people who are going to start a successful business. So what does a lender actually review? They're going to look at your credit history. Believe it or not, there's a couple lenders that don't look as seriously about your credit history as others might or as you might think others might. Your character, not that you are a character, <laughs> but um, 
your commitment to the business, any education you might have. Doesn't have to be formal, but again, if you're gonna open up a pizza business, have you done anything with cooking? Cash flow. Now again, this is gonna look at your business plan. What's your repayment ability? Collateral is a big one. That's security for the loan. And I've already um, said this to a few people. When they say, what collateral do you have? And you go, I, well, I don't know. Do you have a house? What you don't want to say is, oh, no, I don't want to put my house up. They don't want your house. Believe me, they don't want your house. All they want to know is you're committed to the business and that you're committed to the security for the loan. And there are horror stories. I will tell you one. It's not one of my favorite ones, but um, so business was forming. Business plan was done. I went with the folks to the lender sat there, I really don't say anything, as I'm not supposed to, but um, but when they said collateral, besides the fact that they said, well, we have a house, believe it or not, this lender looked at the lady that was there and said, well, your wedding ring, what's that worth? Ouch, you don't ask that question. And uh, after we got out of there, I called uh, one of the banking uh, managers and said, what is going on? You don't ask that. Again, they don't really want your house. They didn't want her ring. They wanted to know if they had commitment to doing this. Other conditions that affected is certainly the state of the economy. We're in the midst of it. Um, timing. How much preparation, any past history of business experience, business types. And the thing that I'm finding with COVID, and I hate to say it this way, but I think sometimes it's an excuse. Well, it's COVID and, and we can't do it. And actually I'm writing a book. And in the book, I have a statement that says, when did we learn to stop? When did we learn to stop? We don't stop, we keep going. Uh, if, a little bit of an interesting one. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. In today's environment, you can't just give up. And where we can help as business advisors is to help you to look at different ways of getting to where you wanna go. So what do these people read first? A lot of times, because I've been in these meetings, they'll look at the executive summary and the executive summary is basically a synopsis of the business plan. It's a summary. It includes what the business is, who the market is, and how much money initially you're gonna be looking to get. And then a lot of times, if they like what they read there, they'll actually turn to the back of the business plan to look at the financials. And if it's a startup, sometimes they'll just breeze through it because they know it's a startup. They wanna know that what you have though is possible. If they do those two things, they might go back. They certainly will look at you ask you questions because you're going to be the management you're going to own it they're going to ask you about well what about your customers what kinds of customers are you expecting and certainly the competition these are all the things that you should have prepared you should be able to answer these very easily and as a business advisor that's one of the things we can do is rehearse it with you. We can ask you the key questions so that you're fully prepared. 
So this is this is what you want to do before you write the plan. Who's going to be reading the plan? Who's your audience? Is it your uncle? Or is it a banker? A venture capitalist? And I have worked with some venture capitalists. They're more interested in what's the return on their investment than really what the business is. So you have to be careful of that. Um, but if you prepare, you'll know that you can be successful in it. And really, what do you want to accomplish with this business plan? You really want to let people know what the business is, how successful it can be, and how you're going to get there. So how are you going to write the plan? Well, one of the things that we have, we meaning Small Business Development Center, is a program called Entra Skills. Entra Skills. If you're an SBDC client, we can enroll you in Entra Skills. It's all online. It's a complete small business program that takes you all the way through, including writing the business plan. And if you didn't know this, all of the Small Business Development Center things that we do for you are free of charge. Free of charge means you don't pay for them, but you still have to do things. So one of the things we want to look at is addressing a little bit of a redundancy, but the core elements. What's the product? Who's the market? Who's your competition? Who's your management team? Who, the, who are the people that are going to be running this business? And what are their qualifications? And then finance, last one. Um, and one of the things I do as a business advisor, not as much as I used to do because of COVID, as I go out and visit your business. Once you get established, I'll come out, take a look around, ask you, how's it going? What kinds of things are happening? And then together we put our heads together and say, okay, well, maybe we should approach this a little bit differently. Maybe we should do a little more marketing in this area. So you really should describe your product or service in enough detail for the audience to understand its function. And also to be able to pinpoint what the value is to your customer. We always ask the question, is this something that somebody wants? Is this something that somebody will buy? If the answer to those are not, then you got to go back and take another look at it. So what's the value to the customer? First of all, do you have a customer in that area? And then be able to present your current stage of development. How are you actually going to go about from the startup to maybe a year out? And what's the life cycle of your product? Is it new? Is it already existing? Is it somewhat proprietary? Nobody else has it. And is it protected by patent or copyright? And we certainly can look through and help you with that. Um, a story that, uh, that I remember is I actually had a student who came to me and said, I have a way of basically taking entities that people use, like the CPAC, and putting it in this device that I've come up with, and it basically cleans it, sterilizes it. I said, well, that's really interesting. And they already had a provisional patent that they were working on. And I helped them to finish that and they ended up getting it. Now, here's the stop that I talked about. If they had continued 
to this day. I'm sure you've seen some of these products now. They would have cornered the market. It's what I deal with. You know, oh, so close. So encouragement is definitely a thing to do. If you've got an idea and it is a good idea and it's protected by patent or copyright and we can help you with that, then you got to keep going. So who are the markets that you want to approach? What's the demand for the product? How many things, how many units can you sell and at what price? At what price? And the, the slogan there is whatever the market will bear. Okay, so if you put together a really nice product, very functional, nice product, but you charge three times what the market normally charges, you're not going to sell very many. And unfortunately, when we tell our clients that, they have a thing that they say, which is, oh, well, everybody wants it. Oh, everybody will buy it. And then we sit there. So you have to support where you came up with this stuff. A market survey is not a bad idea. Go out there and ask people. This is what I'm going to be selling. This is what I'm going to be charging. Would you buy it? How many would you buy? Do you normally buy these things? That's your current buying habits. Or is this something new? Who will buy? And you're talking about individuals. Most of us think like that. But there are also businesses, government, maybe overseas, but definitely individuals, certainly possibility of businesses, and even selling to the government, which we have programs on. So where are the customers located? It's something you look at in your business plan. Where are your customers located? And how are you going to reach them? How are you going to get the word out? Direct mail is one way. Ads, a sales force, getting people out there to show people. A good example of that is uh, uh, the Rochester Public Market. There are people that go there on the weekends. They rent a table and they put their products right on the table and they start to sell them. I have, um, if anybody's been to the Rochester Public Market, you may have seen the barbecue sauce that's sold there. That actually was one, again, another one of my actually adult students who came to me and said, you know, we have this barbecue sauce and people love it. We want to expand, okay. So what they did was they went to the public market. I think they paid $75 for a table one weekend. And they sold everything that they brought. Now they are in several markets worldwide. They actually export to Florida, England, and other places around the world. Very successful. Uh, so successful that they had to get an industrial kitchen to produce it. Originally, they were doing it right out of their own kitchen. So the other thing you got to look at is present the methods you'll use to deliver the product, the, the, the distribution. Um, when they started, when the people with the barbecue sauce started 
to go to England, even Florida, there's more costs involved in the distribution. And they had to take that into consideration. A good one too is another client of mine who sold coffee beans, roasted coffee beans, imported the beans, roasted them, and then sold them. Very, very good coffee. So I said to them one day, I said, gee, how do you sell it? Well, we sell it on the internet or if they come into our store. Okay, so I went on the internet. The price for the beans was like around $15. The price for the shipping was also $15. Oh, no, 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 no. So I went back to them and I said, you can't charge that much for the shipping because it kills your sale. So they did, they agreed, they searched around. They actually ended up with the US Postal Service, 99 cents to deliver it, bingo. And that's why it's not just, this is the way it's gonna be done and I don't wanna look at either side you have to say this is how it's going to be done. But you know, I have to look at other possibilities. I have to make sure, again, that it's going to be successful. And one of the other things you want to look at is how's your customer going to pay for the products. Cash is the best way. As they say, cash is king. But are you going to accept credit cards? Or are you going to extend credit? If you're selling to a business and you're selling multiple items, are you going to extend credit? And if you are, plan for it. 30, 60 days. And I know one corporation that I worked with, believe it or not, extended it to 120 days before you got paid. That's difficult. That's difficult because then you're saying, well, if I have to wait that long before I get paid, then I'm going to raise my price. Danger, danger. You don't want to raise your price if you don't have to. So the more you can consider this before it happens, the better off you're going to be. Again, look at your competitors. Um, a few years ago, another one of these stories, I had a student that came to me who was interested in these um, rovers that you stand on and you lean forward and it goes. And they were imported from China. And I said, oh, okay. He showed me all the financials. Pretty good, good return on investment. I said, but be careful because they're new. I'm not sure they're 100% approved. And I don't know how big the market is. Well, this is the thing about you. It's your idea. So you just say, oh, it'll work. Well, within two months is when you may remember this, they started catching fire. It was the batteries which destroyed his market. Um, they've since replaced those batteries. He's getting some of them sold, but he's lost a lot of ground. So it's important to know what kind of competitors are out there, what the marketplace is like, and what the possibilities are. And if there's any regulatory issues, as I say, if you have to import something or export something, what kind of issues are you gonna be facing and how is it gonna affect your sales? What advantages and disadvantages do you have versus the competition? Price, quality, features, maintenance, and service. 
when you look at your advantages and disadvantages, I always draw a triangle, three-sided triangle. One is price, one is time, one is quality. You never, never change quality. But you can adjust the price and you can adjust the time. So if you have a customer that says, okay, I know what you charge and I know you say it takes two weeks to get it, but I need it in a week. If you say, well, in order to do that, I have to increase the price a little bit. Most of the time they're gonna say, we figured that and we're okay with it. Or if you say, I need to reduce the price then you might have to wait four weeks for it. You have to know that going into it though. Because you can't just say, yeah, okay, we can do it. And then you're stuck. Again, the business plan, all the advantages and disadvantages you have to look at. So simplified financials. What are financials? And this is the simplified formula. What comes in, that's revenue. What goes out, that's expenditures. What's left over, that's your net profit. So what comes in is revenue. What goes out is your expenditures. And what's left over is your net profit. And what kind of funding are you looking for? and over what period of time? Is it a loan? It is, a, is it a grant? They all have timelines. And you wanna be able to sustain your business for at least three to five years. So you wanna be able to show how those funds will be used now, I know what I get. Well, but I don't know what it's going to be. I, I get that. I get that. What we're talking about here is forecasting. Just like the weather. Today, it's supposed to be 80 degrees and sunny. Uh, I'm looking out the window. Uh, it's kind of sunny and 40 degrees barely. What that is, is of course it changes. So what you're doing is you're forecasting, but it has to be, if you wanna use the word intelligent, but planned forecasting. And again, we can help with that. Because if we look at something and we go, how are you gonna do that? That's when we wanna talk about it. And when will the revenue actually be generated? When you first start out, you may not get that level of revenue that you thought you would get. And you wanna provide the investors with the appropriate returns for their investment. So, Initially, you're going to show 24 months and a three to five year projection. And that is in the summary within your income statements, your balance sheets, and your cash flow statements. All of those are in Entra skills, and they take you through each one. You want to show, of course, full statements and anything that supports that, your appendices. Support financial projections and analysis from competitors. One of the interesting things is I have a few businesses that they actually get, endor they get endorsements from their competitors. Great people, great product. They actually are people that we would buy from well. That's what a lender wants to hear. So let's look at credit. 
There were the four C's of credit. And the first one is, what's the status of your personal credit history? Well, I, I, I haven't had a good time. Yeah, well, as I always say, yeah, like the rest of us. <laughs> None of us really have that high score anymore like we used to. It's just, it's just the times. Uh, and lenders know that. But if you've repaired credit, if you've had a credit card and you've actually brought it down to zero or you've been bringing it down, that's what they like to see. Next one is capacity. Can you in fact do what you need to do in order to meet the obligation that you've committed to? What's your capacity? Third one is capital. And that's really looking at what's available in your cash flow that can actually help you to get to where you got to go. Because it is a competitive business environment. Unless you have a unique product that nobody has ever heard of, and even that can be problematic, it's really going to be a competitive business. And it just as it says, a frequent cause of business failure is being undercapitalized, having too little cash to carry the business through. And that's one of the things I see when I look at the financial projections. And I'd probably say, um, you probably want to put a little bit more in here. The other one that I see a lot of times is you don't pay yourself. The lenders like to know that you're going to pay yourself something within that first year because they don't want you to lose face in the business. And the fourth one is collateral. We already talked a little bit about that. And that's your assets. What you're saying you pledge to secure the loan. A little while back, I had a uh, $3.5 million loan request. And the collateral is what helped the lender to say yes to it. It was, it was a service. And with the service came buildings and land, buildings and land. So when we looked at the financials, it was actually an operating business. So it has some history. When we looked at the financials, it was very clear that the assets were about two plus million dollars. So if the bank had to sell it off, they could recoup that money. Well, where was the other million and a half? One of the things I said was, what is that? What is that million and a half more? Well, one is the customer list. Well, I've seen this before. Customer lists can actually be exaggerated. So we looked real closely at it. And what we found out is that what they said million dollar customer list was about $300,000. They settled for 500,000. The other thing I saw was there was a maintenance fee and the maintenance fee was $75,000 a year. So I said, well, to the prospective buyers, I said, go back and ask them what that is. Come to find out it was their uncle that they were that they were paying 75,000 a year, they say for maintenance. Yeah, that's dangerous. You don't want the lender to hear that stuff. So one of the things we wanna look at as we do the appendices, 
full financial statements, your resume and the resume of any management shows who you are, what you've been doing, where you might be knowing a lot about this business or a little. Uh, if you have a product, photos, drawings, brochures, what's your competitive analysis? Uh, one of the things I, I really don't like to hear is, oh, we don't have any competitors. Yeah, I like the pizza business. And the industry and comparables. How have others made dollars? You can talk about that. It's similar, business, similar to your business model, but it's not identical. And yours is probably, even though you don't want to say it quite this way, the better way, the better product. The result of all of this is a successful business. You can pay off your loans. You'll have investors with adequate return on their investment, happy customers, and long-term employees. What a concept, long-term employees. Very important. So what can you do next? Contact the Small Business Development Center and request, put in a request for counseling. And that's at nyspdc.org. Once you are a client, and it doesn't take very long, um, we can enroll you in the Entre Skills program. And then a nice thing is, as a business advisor, I monitor your Entre Skills progress. As you submit a section, I get an email that says you've submitted a section. I go in and I can give you feedback, suggestions for next steps, etc. Very, very helpful. And that's it. Do we have any questions? Yeah, there's a couple on the chat uh, here. Dick, that we can get. When you're thinking of starting a business, is there a way to determine minimum investment to get started but not get you in trouble? Yes. That's the easy answer. We Again, we have to look at the business, all the things that we just said, what the business is, who the competitors are, what you're going to be charging, um, those kinds of things. We can, we can look at the formula and that's in your business plan. And from that, we can say, yeah, it looks viable. That's that feasibility. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any other question. There is one, a, a request here for to go back to the slide uh, be, the previous to the major sections on business plan pretty early in the, the presentation. I, I guess they wanted to take a look at that one. The one before major sections of business plans. Okay, that was that, okay. This? No, I think it was, uh, it was one just prior to major sections of business plan. We went by that. So if you could go to major sections of business plan and back, back one, it must be the one just before that, if I'm- Just before this? It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one, a business plan, okay, okay. Is that the correct one? I think so, she's nodding, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Is there a question there? Or? A question on it or just uh, wanted to look at it? Just wanted to look at it again? Okay, all right. Are there any other questions out there? Again, I think if you could maybe go to your slide that uh, gives you your, your information about uh, small business and how to contact the small business development center. I, th I think that would be important because that's uh, yeah, I, I think that I, I don't realize, I think people realize that uh, all your services are free. And I mean, what, what's better than free? <laughs> you, you, 
do an excellent job up there, Jan, and your, and your staff. I know Sam Campanello was there for a while, uh, for a long while. And, uh, it, it's, it's a great service for any business. It doesn't, you don't have to have, be a new business either, right? Dick, it could be somebody that's existing in business and looking expanding or changing. Right. Yep. And uh, so it's. Uh, it, I think it's. Uh, people should be aware of that. I see Jan's on our call too. So, hi Jan. Anything you want to add in there? Morning, Tom. Good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to participate in the program and uh, partnership that we have with the chamber. And uh, I certainly hope that uh, more people are taking advantage of the services that the chamber provides. So uh, we've been a proponent of the chamber and, and uh, programs and the opportunities that exist. As far as the SBDC is concerned, I think the, the, the main thing to keep in mind for everyone is we work with businesses of every shape and size, and that's everybody from thinking of starting a business to those who have actually started uh, and everything else in between. So yeah, not just startups, existing businesses as well. And the key uh, item to keep in the back of your mind is uh, it is provided to you at no cost. I used to tell people it's free, but my wife and my P3 doesn't have good time. <laughs> it's uh, we now call it prepaid because it's your tax dollars at work. So you already paid for our services. You should take advantage of it. I want to point out the fact that all of our advisors uh, are working from home right now. So we will be doing uh, meetings via Zoom or email or phone conferences. And uh, we'll work with you for as long as we're all doing something constructive. So if you want to work on a business plan and you can get it done in uh, two or three days, which is uh, very rare to be quite frank. Um, but if it takes you three months or even three years, we'll continue working with you until you get it done and we're available to answer any and all questions. So you can appreciate the opportunity and looking forward to doing more of these. That's great. Well, we, we appreciate working with the SBDC. We love our partnership. And again, it's, it's an it's a amazing resource that people should take advantage of, uh, businesses of all, all types and shapes. And you're, you're, you're right. So um, we were going to put this up on our, our YouTube page, too. This will be the we recorded this. So it'll be available for anybody that wants to see it. They couldn't make it at this time. And we'll let our, our, our membership know that. So I uh, want to thank you, Dick, for uh, taking the time to, to present to our our uh, chamber and uh, Janet also, uh, thank you again. And, You're very welcome. Uh, and uh, thanks to everybody who attended and seeing no more questions, I, I think I'm gonna end the session and everyone have a good day and uh, a good month. Take care. Take care.